Woo. Man, I'll tell you what, it is getting warm out here. The sun is out. It's going to be 91 and 92 this week. We're getting into, you know, mid to late June. Pretty soon we'll be into July. And this is that heat period where everyone starts to be afraid to fertilize. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk to you about fertilizing in the summertime and in this heat. So hold on. So obviously we don't want to be putting out a whole bunch of nitrogen on our lawn during the... Uh, during these hot months that are stressful, we're just going to cause more stress on the lawn. In other words, the lawn is storing up fuel and carbohydrates. And when we put a bunch of nitrogen on the lawn, it basically causes the plant to burn up that reserve. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to create a bunch of energy. But at the same time, every day of every year, nitrogen is going away from your soil. So you might want to put a little bit out. And that's where Green Shocker comes into play or even Super Juice if you wanted to. Um, this year I've been really using Green Shocker and one important point about this is your setting on your spreader. Okay, so this is really hard to see, <laughs> but it's just over eighth of an inch. See that? I don't know if you can see that or not. Is that this stuff is as fine as salt. And what that means is you can put out a very light coat of this and have fantastic particle distribution. What do I mean by that? So the particle distribution, if you look at Green Shocker, like if you run over a piece of cement, you'll see you'll see a black dot on like every quarter inch, eighth of an inch of that cement. It's particle distribution. And that's why we made it so small. It's just tiny. Now it's still a DG particle. So when the water hits it, as soon as it gets wet within five minutes it's going to start to work into the ground and it starts to go to work within you know 24 to 48 hours you'll start to see some green and that's really all i've been doing on this lawn um i've just been nursing it back to health little by little so she's looking really good now this is zenith zoysia from seed this is zenith zoysia from seed as you can see it's a busy sunday down here at the beach now I have a couple weird spots still in my lawn that I'm trying to figure out whether it, I think it's subsurface rocks or something down there, but the rest of the lawn looks really nice. So uh, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to come out here and I'm just going to hit it with a green shocker and then run some water on it and that's it. That's all I'm doing on it. When Dirt Booster comes back out, I'll be pounding Dirt Booster down. I'll be putting Dirt Booster every week on this, on this lawn. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Let me get this other stuff out. Mistake. Of course, I'm going to do this one-handed, which means I will spill it for sure. that it is as fine as salt. Tiny, 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 tiny. So one thing that you need to be aware of when you're putting out green shocker is it's not like another fertilizer or a fertilizer that's white. It's very, very fine and it's black. It's almost impossible to see where it's going while you're putting it out. So one of the tricks that I do is I figure out, so. I know it's going three feet on either side and I really pick something off in the distance. So I pick a certain post on my fence and that's what I'm shooting towards. And I think it's important to understand that you need to forget about looking and seeing where these particles are going and just trust your lines. That's one thing that's real important. Trust your lines because you're not going to be able to see this stuff as it goes out of the spreader. So. Here's one other interesting note when uh, the outside of this fence doesn't have irrigation. So basically a lot of that grass burned off, but guess what survived? The Bermuda survived. So um, I actually went out there on the outside of the fence. I'm putting down PGF complete. I'm actually kind of hitting it hard because I want that Bermuda to spread and spread. Now the other thing I did was um, when I put down the Bermuda seed on my neighbor's lawn, I actually went and put some seed out front there and scarified it. 
let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so this whole section of the lawn is irrigated, got it? This whole section of the lawn is not. I'm having to hand water this, but this basically turned into all Bermuda out here. A lot of this young zoysia died off, and I'm going to show you bare spots. So what I did is two days ago, I came back by here, and I scarified my bare spots, and I put down Bermuda seed. So I'm going to have Bermuda all out here, zoysia out here, and then probably a mix at the fence. But today I'm going to put down some more PGF Complete on this to really push it, make it spread. Don't forget, warm season grasses, if you have a weak lawn and it's hot, they can take that energy. They can take that fertilizer. So you can hit them still, even in June and July, you can hit it with PGF Complete. And that's what I'm doing the outside there. So this is a 40 pound bag of PGF Complete. I don't know I don't know where this came from. I've had it for a while, so I'm using it on the outside of the fence. But look at the difference in the hole size. So here, I can almost get a finger through there. That's a quarter or just over a quarter of an inch. I'm really pumping this stuff down. Okay, so here's the PGF Complete. I swear to you, best fertilizer on the market. Tiny particles, three forms of nitrogen. Absolutely amazing great stuff high high in iron micronutrients humic and a 16 4 8 ratio had um, extra fertilizer left over, the PGF complete in the tub. So what I've done is I've come out here and I've just thrown it on all these plants. Uh, whether they're bushes, flowers, I've got zinnias. I'll even throw a little bit on my palms, but I'll just throw it all out here. I just broadcast it by hand all out here. Now some people say, oh, you need to put down a 10, 10, 10. No, I don't. I put them over here on these little roses that I've got planted. And why am I not putting a 10, 10, 10? Because this soil around here is high on phosphorus anyways. And sorry for the noise. What's, what's, what nutrient, sorry. What nutrient leaves the soil the fastest? Do you know? Nitrogen. That's right. So uh, if you have anything that's green, i.e. bamboo, shrubs, flowers, whatever. You can actually take some of this and, and broadcast it in there. And you can see my bamboo, let me show you. <clears throat> okay, so this bamboo here started off at about 36 inches. Remember that last year? And now look at it. Uh, we're over 12 feet, I believe. So this is not, again, I'll say it one more time, if you don't follow my channel, this is not regular bamboo. This is clumping bamboo. It does not spread through rhizomes. So it's not gonna be all over my yard. This is clumping bamboo, but look at that. Isn't that crazy? So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some of the extra here and throw a little bit on each one. I do this all the time at home. I do this to my rose bushes. I do it to all my plants. I just throw a handful. It's slow release. I don't have to worry about it burning it. So I just throw it in there. Garden of Whedon. Isn't that cute? <laughs> Where's my wife find this crap?
Whew. Man, it's starting to get warm out here. Today's video is officially brought to you by Yingling Traditional Lager. It's Duck's favorite beer. <laughs> it's probably one of the only beers I drink now, is Yingling. Oh, gosh, that's good. So, after you put out your green shocker, um, wet it with your irrigation hose, whatever, let it sit for about 10 minutes and then water it in. Remember the green shocker needs to break apart, needs to work into the soil and then needs to be watered into the roots. That's where it's really going to take effect. So if you have a rain coming, put out green shocker and water it right before the rain. Yes, I said water it before the rain, get it to break down a little bit. And as soon as that rain starts, it'll push it right in. The day after the rain, you'll be like, holy crap, my grass is dark green. Trust me, that's what I do out here. So here's what I want you guys to remember. When we start to get in July and we start to get into August and we start to get into these 90s and this pounding heat, maybe even some dry spells, I really want you to cut back on your strong fertilizers and just sort of spoon feed. And that's what I'm doing. Use green shocker. If you have a rainstorm coming in, put down some green shocker and let it get into the soil, your grass will love it. In about a week or two, Dirt Booster will be available and you can put Dirt Booster down anytime. It doesn't matter, you can put it down in the middle of a drought. Why? Because there's really no nutrients in it. It's organic matter, it's biochar, it's humic acid, it's mycorrhizal fungi, and it's um, good microbes. So what I'm gonna be doing out here, especially with these real weird weak spots, I'm probably gonna have to bring in a little bit of soil to build up that whatever's underneath it but I'm also gonna be hitting it with dirt booster I'm gonna be pounding it down I want to put dirt booster out here probably almost every week if not every other week um, it's just a great summertime product to put down all you're doing is you're improving your soil there's a little bit of nutrients going in there but there's no way to do a burn and then if you if you say hey my lawn looks a little weak and need to want to green green it up throw down a little green chalker once we start to cool down we'll do we'll go back to pgf complete once we get into the the late summer early fall we'll hit with a little bit of pgf complete we'll actually be back on that again so my next video by the way hit subscribe i'm going to sharpen my reel mower because i noticed some real weird stuff going on with my blade cutting uh and that's about it so uh talk to you later Duh.